Hey friends, it's Simon Hurley and welcome to another video. Now in the last video, I promised you guys that we would get 3D embossing folders very soon. And in today's video, I'm following through on my promise and I've got three new 3D embossing folders that I've created with Spellbinders. I am so excited about this release because I've been using embossing folders for so long with my lunar pastes and inks. They do some amazing techniques and to finally have them in my own designs is super exciting. So in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through the three beautiful designs that we've created and then show a bunch of different ways and techniques to use embossing folders in your card making projects. These are available right now and I'll leave links down below to all the supplies I used in today's video and using those links helps support me so I really appreciate it. Now without further ado, let's get into it. Jumping right into the folder designs, here is the first one called Sparkling Snow. I absolutely love this design. It's got a bunch of different snowflakes and little sparkles all throughout. Now what's really exciting about these 3D embossing folders is that they're a little bit larger than five and a half by eight and a half. So this makes it really large so that you can work with larger card sizes. So if you wanna make five by seven cards and still use your embossing folders, this is what they're really great for. However, that being said, even though they're larger, the size is still scaled nice and small. So that if you wanna use is that an A2 size card, the pattern isn't super large on the card. This sparkling snow pattern is absolutely gorgeous. I love the different kind of detailed snowflakes that we have all throughout. And then we have different little sparkles and snowy dots all throughout as well. It kind of gives this really magical snowy look. I've never seen a folder with sparkles, stars, and the snowflakes mixed all throughout. And I think it's a really fun mixture of a design. And you can see that amazing texture too. These are a little bit thicker. Some areas are a little bit thinner and these are kind of like rounded off which is what's really awesome about the 3D embossing folders is you get lots of different varying and rounded textures throughout. This design is going to be amazing for scene building if you want to put little animals in front of it and blend this to make a snowy background. There are so many techniques I can see using with this one and getting such beautiful results. Next we have this design called Geo Quilt, and although it doesn't look like much in the package, this one might be one of my favorites. So this is a really great geometric quilted looking design. I released it during the holidays, but really this is gonna be an all year round design. And with this 3D folder, what I love about it so much is just all of the insane dimension we get in here with raised and lowered areas, different areas that'll kind of pucker the cardstock a little bit. There's lots of really amazing things going on with this design. So let me show you up close to this folder, it is insane the amount of detail they were able to get in there. You can kind of see when I tilt it, all of that shading from the texture. So you get these kind of lowered areas, some are raised to create this sort of quilted looking design. And it's got these kind of quilt squares all throughout. So you can make it in holiday colors and make it look like a really beautiful holiday quilt or just a great geometric background. I find that even though geometrics are not always the most exciting or beautiful design, you will use these all year round, whether you put just a floral on top and it makes a really great, interesting and beautiful background no matter what you pair it with. Now every Christmas, I love to do some sort of take on a poinsettia. I love poinsettia florals. They're one of my favorites. I think they're so beautiful and festive around the Christmas season. So this year I did it in a 3D embossing folder called Playful Poinsettia. And this one's even more exciting because it's a 3D and cut embossing folder. And I'll show you what that means. So of course you get this nice large folder with that beautiful poinsettia design all throughout. I'll walk you through that a little bit more in just a second, but it also comes along with this large poinsettia die. And what is so exciting is that this die lines up with one of the largest poinsettias on the folder to cut it out and then you can emboss it. So you'll end up with this really great large textured poinsettia, which just turns out so beautiful. And I'll show you that in a little bit. This poinsettia design is kind of funky and playful and really fun. It's kind of a regular and it's not super perfect poinsettias all throughout the design, which is what I love about it. It's got some character and I think that's what makes this design so much fun. So when you do the embossing, of course, you get this beautiful 3D pattern, which is super cool with this one because some of the petals are a little bit lower than others, some are more raised up, and they all have this really great kind of rounded dimension and texture to it as well. So in this design, you have some larger poinsettias, some that are a little bit smaller, some that are kind of half poinsettia stems that come out there, and then lots of different holly and berry clusters all throughout to fill in the rest of the design. Okay, so let's first start off by talking about the sandwich that you need to run it through your die cutting machine, and also how to the best results when you're doing 3D embossing. Every brand's folders are a 
little bit of a different thickness and you might need a different sandwich. So I'm gonna show you what works well with the 3D Spellbinders embossing folders. So I'm gonna take a piece of my Simon Hurley Create Stark White cardstock. This is 110 pounds, so it's quite heavy and I love to use it for pretty much all of my card making projects. Now this first step is a recommendation. I'm gonna be completely honest here and say I usually don't follow it, but if you're having trouble getting embossed results without your cardstock cracking, you're gonna to wanna to try this. So go in onto your piece of cardstock and just lightly mist it down two or three times. You just want your paper to be slightly moist and glistening, but not sopping wet with water. This will loosen the fibers of the cardstock and help it form to the design a little bit better. Then I'll open up the embossing folder, place down my cardstock, and what's really awesome about this is you can line it up in any area of the folder where you like that design. And then I'll close the folder down. Then to do the embossing, I'm using the Platinum 6 die cutting machine. I'm going to use the platform base, which is A, and place that right in here. Then I'll place down the 3D embossing folder. And lastly, I'll place down the D adapter plate, which is going to be the thick plate that you use for embossing. And we'll run this right through the die cutting machine. It's not too difficult and should be pretty smooth as you run it through. Then when we open up our embossing folder, here is that beautiful design. Like I said, you can see that gorgeous 3D effect with all of the different layers of the dimension in there, and you get such a beautiful, crisp design. Now let's talk about the poinsettia die that's included along with the playful poinsettia folder. I'm gonna go in with the die and place it down on a piece of red cardstock and just run it through my die cutting machine to cut this out. Here's a little bit of awkward die cutting as we talk about it. I prefer to do the die cutting before we do the embossing because if you do the embossing first and then try to die cut, it might flatten the design a little bit through your die cutting machine. All right, then we'll take this out and pop it right out and you get this really great outline of that poinsettia. And you can line it up either on the bottom here or you could flip it over to this top side. If you're doing the top side, just flip the die cut over and line it up here. And on this top side where it's kind of an indent, it should sort of just slot into place right on that design. That's how you know you've got it in the exact place it needs to be. And mint tape is gonna be your best friend here. I'm gonna tape it down using a little bit of mint tape and that's gonna hold it in place so it doesn't move. I also love the mint tape because it doesn't rip my cardstock. So even with the pressure of the die cutting machine, I find that it does really well. All right, then we'll close this up. You definitely still wanna be careful with the tape, and this is why I taped it on the back side too. So if you are using a tape that accidentally might rip, it is on the back side of the poinsettia, so that's why I like using the top. There's no rip with the mint tape, which is awesome. And then we have this really beautiful textured poinsettia. I absolutely love this. And now, of course, I mean, you guys know me. I'm gonna go in using a little bit of a darker colored ink. Here I'm using Game Over, and I'm just going to lightly blend this right over top of the poinsettia using a domed foam blending foam and just really lightly hitting the raised areas to give it a little bit of dimension and color. And then I'll even go in with a little bit of slippery when wet lunar paste to give it even more dimension with this little bit of yellowish gold right in the center. So just lightly tap it on your fingers and tap it onto those berries to brighten it up and give it a little bit of a metallic shine. It looks so gorgeous when you do that inked detail and a little bit of lunar paste. All right, and let's finish off this card background with one of our first embossing folder techniques. So I'm gonna go into the Playful Poinsettias embossing folder, and you're going to want to use the side that has more of a flat surfaces and the designs imprinted into it. You don't wanna use the side that has the raised designs like this. So this happens to be the side with my name and the printing on the front of the folder. Then I'm gonna go in with Fake Plant, or an ink that's a little bit darker than the color of cardstock that I'm using, and I'll just take this ink pad and swipe it all over the top of this background. This is going to color the background and make those areas that are imprinted, which is the design, slightly lighter, so it'll kind of highlight those. So you just wanna add lots of ink all over the background. And if you want the ink to move even a little bit more, you could always go in and just spray this with a little bit of water to get kind of a watercolor effect going. Then I'll grab my piece of green cardstock, line it up on my design there. And the great part about these big folders is you have lots of options on where to line this up. I want the poinsettia to be a little bit more at the top there. So I'll place that down and then you wanna hold this nice and tight and make sure it doesn't move while you run it through your die cutting machine. All right, and when you lift it out, it's a little bit of a mess, but here is what that design looks like. It's so beautiful. I love that that kind of watercolory effect makes it a little bit blotchy in some areas, but it makes the background a lot darker than the embossed images, so it makes those really come to life and highlights them. Then when it comes to cleaning out your embossing folders, the Simon Hurley inks don't stain and they're really easy to clean since they're water-based. So I just spray it down with a little bit of water to react it, and then I'll go in with there with a rag and just make sure to clean out the whole folder so it's ready to use for the next time we wanna do our embossing. 
super easy to clean out. Now, another thing you could do to add some more texture and dimension, and you guys know I love to do this already, is go in with your ink pad that's a little bit darker and your blending sponge and go right around the edge and blend it to make it a little bit darker. This is going to draw your eye to the center of the card, which is lighter, and that's where our focal point poinsettia is gonna be. But it's really cool when it comes to embossing folders because the ink catches onto the folder a little bit differently and will sort of highlight different areas depending on how raised up they are. It really highlights the design and brings out all of the beautiful texture that's in this embossing folder. So a really fun technique to do, even if it's just the edges like this, to bring more dimension to the center. All right, then to adhere this down, I'm gonna go in with my glue press with barely arts liquid glue inside. And one of my favorite ways to adhere down embossing folders happens to be liquid glue. Because there's so many raised and lowered areas, the liquid glue tends to be able to kind of get into those areas and adhere it down really nicely. So that's why I like using it on these backgrounds. And that glue press makes it really handy. So then I'll line it up on my stark white card front. I got a couple seconds to kind of move it around and make sure that it's nice and centered and then adhere it into place. All right, then to highlight this poinsettia even more, I'm gonna go in with my 3M foam tape to pop it up. I love this large roll of 3M foam tape. It's quite huge and I've already used a lot of it, but it's just more cost effective to buy it in a large roll like that. And then you don't have to be scared about using it up either. All right, then the cool part about this is you could line it up exactly with the design and pop it up like this. So it just highlights it up there and it continues that design all throughout. But what I'm gonna do is just rotate it a little bit so that there's some green poking out with those petals. I think that's fun and makes it look like leaves. So that's what I'm gonna do, but you can adhere it straight down if you want to. And then adhere it down and pop it up off the card. How fun is that? I love it. To finish this card off with the sentiment, I'm going in with the wonderful winter sentiments. What I love so much about these, it's the hot foil plate that foils six sentiments at once. And then once you're done foiling them, you can go in and use the one die to cut them all out. So it's a huge time saver. I tend to do all my foiling at once so I can have a lot of sentiments on hand for the winter season. And then I'm able to quickly sift through the different sentiments I have and use them on my card making projects quickly and easily. Today, I really like the sentiment that says have a holly jolly Christmas and that a foil matches that gold in the center of the poinsettia. And then we'll just pop that sentiment on some foam tape right below that poinsettia in the center of the card. And check out how this beautiful card turned out. I absolutely love that you can spotlight the poinsettia in the center of the card with that wonderful die that we've included. It makes it so unique and three-dimensional and really pops off the card. And then finishing it off with the several techniques that we use in the background to really make it pop and stand out. It looks so cohesive and gorgeous, and I love how it turned out. All right, that last watercolor technique didn't really do it justice since it was so tone on tone, it was kind of hard to see. So I thought I'd do it in more colors. Also, we'll show on how to use the Geo Quilt design in a different color palette so it doesn't just need to be used for Christmas cards because I'll be using this one all year round. So again, take the design of the embossing folder that has the printing on it. If you want to, you could ink this side too and see how it'll come out, but I like to use this top side here. Then I'll go in with my ink pads. I'm gonna start off with the lightest color and just sort of rub it onto the surface of your design. And then I'll move into the next color. Here I'm using Prom Queen. Rub it on the surface there and kind of blend those colors together a bit. And then last but not least, I'm going in with Bee Sting. So we're doing this kind of beautiful, warm color combination. I absolutely love this color combo. And every folder is gonna give you a different look. I actually haven't tried it with this folder yet, so I'm excited to see. Then I'll go in and mist this down with a little bit of water to get it moving. Then line up my cardstock and place the embossing folder down and then hold it in place to not move it while we run it through our die cutting machine. All right, and here's how it looks once it's complete. I maybe got a little bit too carried away with the water because it really blended out, but I still love how it looks. You can see those lighter raised areas and the darker areas that have all the color kind of flowing throughout it. It gives the effect like maybe you took a little bit of time and kind of watercolored in here, but really it just took your ink and embossing folders and a couple of seconds while you run it through your die cutting machine. Moving on into the next couple backgrounds, let me show you a couple of fun techniques using a brayer. I thought that I would go in with the exact same colors that we used earlier on this embossing folder, but we've already done kind of a first layer of that watercolor. And now I wanna show you how using your brayer on those raised surfaces can really highlight those areas and darken them a little bit. So again, same color, but with the brayer, it just goes on a lot darker and more concentrated. Then I'm gonna move into Prom Queen, again, ink it up. Roll it across the surface there, and just do it nice and gently so that it just hits those raised areas. And I mean, how cool is that result? Again, by doing this brayer in, you get a drastically different look than you just would if you just left the watercolor. And if you don't love it, that's fine too, but I'm just trying to share as many techniques as I can in this video, so that hopefully you'll find a couple that you at least love to do with embossing folders. 
and I mean that look is super cool with that lighter base of color and then that darker color that you brayer on top to just highlight those raised areas is absolutely beautiful. So starting off with this one, I'm gonna create a palette of lunar pastes off to the side using a couple different colors of blue. Starting off with a little bit of clear skies and really a little bit goes a long way with this technique. So I'm just gonna add a little bit onto my plastic palette on the side. Wipe off any of the excess. Next, I'll bring in this gorgeous mid-tone blue called No Diving. I absolutely love this one. It is such a rich and vibrant color. Dip it in there and just put a little bit out on my palette, really thin amount. And trust me when I tell you that the thinner you apply these, the better it'll turn out. Then I'll use a little bit of Midnight Snack, which is the darkest color, and put just a little bit at the top here. Then to do this background, I'm gonna go in with a rubber brayer and I'm going to just gently roll my brayer through this paste and you'll see that the texture paste definitely retains its texture. You just want a thin amount of it across the brayer and then we'll start swiping it onto the surface of the cardstock. And you can see once it goes on the surface, it applies really beautifully down Then you'll reload your brayer when you need to, but you don't want globs of color, just a thin amount across the brayer and then continue to brayer it onto the card. Now you could do this on either side of the design. This time I've decided that I'm not gonna use the raised surfaces. Instead, I'm going to use the design that's more raised in the background and the designs are impressed into it, which is usually the backside of the embossed design. But for this brayering technique, the backside works really well to get such stunning results and it leaves you with a gorgeous colored and shiny background and these beautiful white snowflakes across the scene. Moving into the next color, we'll bring in a little bit of no diving. Again, you can see I'm taking a lot of that color bringing it off to the side so it's nice and thin like this, and then I'll start rolling it onto the surface. And you'll see these colors, even though they're lunar paste, they blend really beautiful together and will create a nice gradient of color. Last but not least, I'm gonna go in with my darkest paste, which is that Midnight Snack color. Bring some over to the side so we have a nice thin amount and then start rolling it onto the surface. That color is gorgeous. It's this super rich navy color and it gives such a beautiful, intense look. We're just gonna gently bring it down a little bit and blend it really beautifully in with that no diving. I love how this looks. Check that out. All right, I'm gonna set this off to the side to dry, and of course, you have a lot more color if you want to continue doing these backgrounds. Like I said, a little bit goes a long way with these pastes, so only apply a little bit down when you're doing this technique. But if you want to, to use any of the excess, I'm just gonna spray down a little bit of water across the surface, grab a piece of my stark white cardstock, and just sort of dip the pastes right into here. It'll look like a hot mess at first, but you just really want kind of a layer of color across the surface. This will work as a great colored cardstock for die cutting out of later because you've got lots of color and shine down on the surface. And then just make sure you spray it down with water and clean off the lunar paste before anything dries. And then when it comes to your brayer, I just sprayed this down with a little bit of water too before it's dry. You can take it underneath the sink if you want to, but I just kind of roll it on a cloth until it turns back to black and then you're nice and clean. Super easy to clean, but again, you wanna do it while it's still wet. And this dries really quickly in a matter of minutes while we were cleaning because we applied it so nice and thin and check that out. That gorgeous shine is just so intense and stunning and you get all of that beautiful color from the lunar paste as well. I absolutely love how it turns out and I love that we used the back side of the embossed design that you usually wouldn't use, but by doing this, it colors the sky and leaves the snowflakes white. Such a cool technique and stunning results in the end. I love it. All right, now to finish off this snowy card, I wanna use one of the snowmen from the snowman scene that usually works along with the Simon Snow Globes collection, but I promised you guys that I would show you how to use it outside of the snow globes. So that's what we're gonna to do today. I'm gonna to start off by going in with a piece of Stark White A2 size cardstock, and I'm just going to cut right across the surface a little kind of wavy hill. You could of course do this with the snowman scene die set. It has a couple hills in there that'll work, but I'll just freehand this one. All right, and that's gonna just go at the bottom of the scene like this. I know it covers up our darkest color, but we need a place for the snowman to stand. All right, and then of course, I've die cut a bunch of trees from the set, and I'm just gonna go in using a little bit of green ink and just blend up from the bottom of those trees to give them a little bit of shading and depth. This just really brings them to life instead of just being one flat color cardstock. Now to get the snowy tree look, you're gonna wanna cut your tree out with the insert inside of it using the green cardstock so you get holes in it. Then you're gonna take the insert out and die cut it out of a white cardstock to get the backer. Then all you need to do is add a little bit of liquid glue onto the back of the tree and then place this right down loosely onto that white cardstock to pick it up and then just pinch it in between your fingers to make sure everything lines up super easily 
on that white cardstock. And that gives you this really great snowy looking tree, which is just adorable. All right, to adhere the snowman together, I have a white base. And to add in the buttons and the eyes, I'm just gonna add a little bit of liquid adhesive onto the back of the snowman, right around those areas. And then I'll just use little strips of black cardstock to pop right behind those areas. And that's gonna be a really easy way to get the black behind that without having to inlay those little pieces individually. Then I'll glue on the little carrot nose. Perfect. We'll also give him a red scarf, which has two layers. So I'll do two different colors of red to layer it up and give it some dimension. Perfect. It's got lots of different options for hats, but I'm gonna use this little kind of stocking hat here. So I'll just add a little bit of liquid glue to the edge and adhere it right onto the snowman's head. And last but not least, we'll grab his little arms and pop those right into place. All right, and then once we got that scene figured out, we can just go in with our glue press and start gluing everything into place and definitely overlap them to give it a little bit of dimension and make it look like a nice tree line. And last but not least, I'll go in and pop up the adorable little snowman on some foam tape to make him pop up from the rest of the scene. And I love the sentiment that says sending warm winter wishes. So we'll just add it in this large space right underneath the snowman on some foam tape. So here's a look at that finished card. That brayered background using the sparkling snow and some lunar paste really shines so bright and I love the bold blue colors that it adds. And then finishing it off with the snowman scene from the Simon Snow Globe sets is so adorable. I love that you can use those scenes outside of the snow globes to create really great layered 3D cards like this. All right, next let's do another brayering technique using those same colors, but here I'm going to be using the ink pads along with the brayer. And this time when I'm working with the design, instead of working on this back side for a smoother result, I'm gonna work on the textured side where the snowflakes are raised off the surface. So here I'm just gonna go in with my brayer right onto my ink pad, and you just want to roll it across the surface, lift up your brayer, and then continue rolling. If you just roll back and forth, you're kind of just inking up the same area. So lift as you're rolling, and then start rolling it onto the surface of of your embossed design. Now it's gonna give you this kind of skippy design, it's not perfect, but that's the fun of using the brayer along with your ink on an embossed folder like this. It gives this sort of a regular vintage colored look that's not perfect, and that's what I love about it. So kind of start brayering in different directions like this, give that kind of jagged edge like that, and just embrace the hot mess and imperfection that this technique starts out as, right? Trust the process as you're doing this. Then I'll go in with no diving and repeat the same process over over again. So ink up our brayer by rolling it across the surface of the ink pad and then start rolling it onto the cardstock. And when I do this too, I want to overlap my colors. So I'm gonna go into that Midnight Snack ink and start rolling onto the surface. And I want sort of stripes of color across. So I'll go across the cardstock and continue rolling. And you'll notice that as I'm doing this, the snowflakes are picking up color as well as the background is picking up color. But the cool part is it leaves sort of this halo around those raised areas. So it's still highlighting those snowflakes while adding the color to the whole background. That's why we're adding ink after the embossing is done. Of course you could add it before you do this embossing folder, but then you wouldn't get this sort of highlighted effect around those raised designs. All right, last but not least, we'll go in with a little bit of clear skies and finish off our design by braying it out with that light this color at the bottom here. Again, go in all different directions, keep it kind of irregular around the snowflakes, and ink up our background. Like I said, it really is kind of a trust the process design, because at first it kind of just looks like a hot mess, and you don't really know where it's going. But once you're kind of done and you can see that full vision with the finished background, I really love the effect. And here's a closer look at the inked background once it's all finished. I love those irregular edges instead of being perfectly blended. And the fact that it gives the whole background color as well as the snowflakes, but sort of just highlights the design in a really unique and irregular way. Is this technique more of an acquired taste? Maybe, but I really love how it turns out. So I wanted to share it along with you guys. So in case if you ended up liking it, you can try it as well. Next, we're gonna bring our ink direct to the surface for a really unique result. So for this technique, I'm using the Maroon Game Over ink pad, and I'm going to take this ink and go direct to the surface. Now again, you could use either side of the Geo Quilt design. I'm gonna use the side with the more raised surfaces on here, and just take your ink pad and go directly to the surface. I'm going pretty light, so this is just kind of hitting the raised surfaces of those designs and giving me a darker ink to look in those areas. So just lightly swipe it across the surface, 
This is what it looks like on the front side like that, but I also wanted to show you what it looks like on the back side because you get a really different effect. And I wanted to show you guys this so that if you're using your embossing folders at home and you're only really using one side, you're kind of missing out because you get really cool results depending on which side of the embossing folder you use and they look completely different. So on this side, which would usually be the sort of back side of the embossed design, I think it looks beautiful. And with this direct to paper ink technique, I almost prefer this side. It looks more like a quilt to me and it's just absolutely beautiful. So really cool that you can apply ink to the surface of your cardstock and depending on the side, it looks completely different. And then what's cool about this is I'm gonna go in with my dome foam blending tool and instead of just leaving it stark white like this, I'm just gonna lightly go in with that exact same game over color and ink blend all over the surface of the cardstock to bring just a little bit more lighter color all the way across. So you still get all of that dimension with a really dark color, but instead of it being so stark against that white, it's more of a monochrome look, which I really like. I mean, this quilted red background is absolutely screaming out for Santa Claus to be on it. So we're gonna go in using the Silly Santa's stamp set. I love these sort of retro looking images and they're really easy to stamp down and not even have to color in. For this one, I'm gonna use the Santa that's holding a gift bag and kind of looking off into the distance. I think that one is a lot of fun. Peel this right off. And then to stamp this down, I'm using the Misty Stamping Tool and I'm gonna place it down onto this Waffle Flower Grip Mat. I really love that grip mat because it'll hold it in place on the surface. Then I'll place down the Santa image, lift it up with the Misty Lid. I'll ink it up with a little bit of Love Struck ink, which is gonna give us a really nice kind of berry red color for the Santa. Stamp it down onto our card. And it does a pretty great job at stamping the first time, but if we want more of a bold and solid image, this is why I did it inside the Misty, because there's a lot of really solid areas. So I wanted to make sure we got really great coverage on the stamp. And also I wanted to be able to go in and add shading too. So we're gonna use Game Over, which is the color that we used in the background earlier for that darker maroon color. And I'm gonna go in with an alt new detail blending brush to just add color to specific areas of the Santa Claus. So here I wanna add some shading down to Santa. So I'll just tap on the color using my blending brush all around. And then I'll stamp it down onto the surface. And I'm just going to repeat this step several different times until I'm happy with how the shading looks. The reason why I'm doing it with a blending brush is because we can tap on that color and get a really nice blended result across the surface. So it looks super smooth and saturated as you're stamping because the bristles of the brush kind of fade out that color. All right, so there's three different times and it gives us that really great gradient of color across that Santa image. All right, then I'm gonna go into the Silly Santa's die set, which has all the coordinating images to cut the Santas out and Ho Ho Ho, which you can use as a sentiment. I'll peel out the one that matches and then simply line it up with the image, leaving an even white border all the way around. And then I'll just go in using a little bit of mint tape and tape it into place to hold it while we run it through our die cutting machine and run it right through my die cutting machine. And it cut out that image absolutely perfect with a nice white border all the way around. Super easy. All right, then I'll adhere this down with a little bit of liquid glue from my glue press. I gotta be so honest, this thing really is a game changer with the way that I use liquid glue. I used to not use it often, but now that it's right out of my hands and I don't have to cap it off all the time because it's in a stand, I've been using it a lot more recently. And I really love how forgiving it is because you can make sure it's perfectly centered for a couple more seconds before you really commit to it. All right, then I'll adhere the Santa down on some foam tape right in the center of that card. And then I'll go in with the foiled sentiment that says Santa Claus is coming to town from the wonderful Winter Sentiments hot foil plate and die set. And I'll adhere it down on some foam tape and make it look like the Santa is standing right on top of the sentiment. That finishes it off perfectly, a super easy card, but I love that background that it looks like a quilted design. So it works along perfectly with Christmas, but also it works all year long as you saw with the different color combinations you can use Use. And with a floral or a different focal point, it'll work for any type of card that you're sending. All right, and of course, you guys know one of my favorite techniques in the past couple of years has been swiping on lunar paste with my fingers and the 3D embossing folders to really highlight the areas of the design beautifully. And it wouldn't be a Simon Hurley video without doing that technique with my own embossing folders. So I've been super excited about this playful poinsettias embossing folder because I thought this would be perfect for doing with lunar paste and getting a beautiful shine. So instead of using black cardstock, I thought I would do kind of a Christmas effect with this craft cardstock. And I'm gonna go in using a little bit of lunar paste gonna start off with this beautiful game over color, this nice maroon. If you guys haven't seen me doing this technique, you just take a little bit on your finger, swipe it off on the edge so it's a really thin amount like that, and then go onto the surface of your cardstock and rub it right onto the surface. 
a really thin layer is super important because you don't want it to go into all of the grooves and cracks of the design. You just want it to hit those most raised areas and give you this beautiful color and shine on top of the surface. A lot of people also ask if you can go in with a sponge instead of your finger, but I like to use your finger because you can really control how much pressure you're adding. And I'm not adding barely any pressure at all. Whereas with a sponge, you get that density, which is going to cush down and it'll probably go into all the little details and fill them all in. But with your finger, you can be careful to just go on those raised surfaces and not give too much pressure so that you still have all that texture that isn't filled with the lunar paste. But by all means, you can definitely try a sponge or the brayer like we've been using in today's video. But I gotta say, cleaning off your finger and switching colors is pretty easy. While the lunar paste is still wet, spray down a little bit of water and wipe your finger onto a cloth on the side of the surface, and it comes off pretty easily from your finger. Now my hands are already pretty dirty, so it doesn't look like it did very much by cleaning it off. To add some dimension, you can go in with different tones of the same color. So here I'm going in the Bee Sting, which is a much lighter red. Again, I'll dip my finger right into the side, kind of scrape it off there. So you can just get a really light amount of that color and then add this to the center of the poinsettia to really brighten the center of the poinsettia up. Now this is what I love so much about lunar paste is that we have lots of colors to choose from. So you're able to do different techniques like this because you can see just how big of a difference those two different shades have on the design. I think it really brings it to life, being able to add dimension and shading with different colors. I clean off my finger pretty quickly and easily. And then for the center of the poinsettias and some of the berries, I'm gonna go in with Slippery and Wet, which is this beautiful gold color. Again, just swipe it right off to the side to get a little bit of gold and then tap it right in the center to brighten it up. And you can even kind of blend it out into that red a little bit while it's so wet. And check out that gorgeous shine once you're done adding all of that color and shading. And since we're applying it so thin, it dries really quickly too. Like this is all dry to the touch as we move on. Next, I'm gonna bring in a little bit of fake plant, which is the green color, and we're gonna do the leaves. So again, add a little bit of color onto your finger like this, and then spread it onto the surface really lightly. Now, I don't mind being too, too perfect when I'm going in here. You can definitely see there's some that gets onto the background and some that overlaps with other colors because really at the end of the day, once this is all complete, nobody's gonna really see many of the mistakes because it's a full background that you've done. So don't be too worried about being an absolute perfectionist when it comes to this. I'm super OCD, trust me, and I don't really bother with being too perfect with this. For me, it's just kind of a fun, little relaxing finger painting technique. It's a pretty beautiful result in the end and it's pretty stress-free once you get the hang of it. I love that gorgeous dark green color. And now to add a couple highlights and some shading, I'm going in with Minty Fresh. This is one of my favorite colors, especially in the paste, because it's super light and bright, and it's a great way to sort of highlight leaves and give it that beautiful kind of minty color. So I'll just go in here and tap on a little bit of that color, and then use a dry finger to sort of blend it out into the rest of the leaf. So kind of use your dry finger to blend, and then add on the color, blend it out. It's a really easy method to blend these together. All right, and once that's all dry, check this out. One of the coolest backgrounds I've ever created. I love these poinsettias. They're so fun and funky, and they give this kind of retro look. And then adding that lunar paste on top of the craft card stock really makes it stand out beautifully and gives it such a gorgeous shine. And of course, it wouldn't be a Simon Hurley card without adding some shading and dimension to the edges. I'm gonna go in using a little bit of Weeping Willow right around the edge to just add a little bit of depth and dimension and some shading in here. And what I really love about this is it's not gonna cover up any of the blending that we did because Lunar Paste will resist your ink. It's got all that shine and it gives kind of a plastic coating once it's done. So we're able to go over that Lunar Paste design without worrying about it too much with ruining anything. And this color on the craft card stock is just a chef's kiss. It's gorgeous. I absolutely love it. It really brings the whole card together. And as I always say, it really just draws your eye to the center, gives it a lot more depth and dimension, and makes you focus on some of the focal points. It is so worth taking the extra little bit of time to add that shading. It really brought this background to life. And then like I said, you can always go in with a paper towel, wipe off those lunar pasted areas on the edges. You can see it's getting rid of any of the excess ink that was on that lunar paste and it resists it just beautifully. So that lunar paste still shines even though we went over it with ink. All right, for the sentiment, I'm gonna go in with a foiled sentiment from the Joyful Christmas Sentiments Glimmer Hot Foil Plate and Die Set. This one has a very similar concept as the Wonderful Winter Sentiments where you foil it in one pass and you cut it out in one pass and you get really beautiful Christmas sentiments. These ones are more of just the classic Christmas sentiments like Happy Holidays, Deck the Halls, Merry Christmas, Joy to the World, and Season's Greetings. And I'm gonna go in here with the Joy to the World sentiment that I foiled using a little bit of green. Again, I just kinda keep these on hand so they're ready for Christmas cards. And I'm just gonna pop this right below that large poinsettia onto the card. 
And there we go. Here's a closer look at that finished card. That sentiment really ties it together with all of the gorgeous shine that's on this card. I love using those lunar pastes to get that beautiful color and shine all across that embossed image. It really makes it stand out and pop off your card. And trust me, once you get the hang of that technique, it's so easy and fun and you'll want to add lunar paste to all of your embossing folder designs. All right, friends, that was a lot of techniques in one video, but I am just so excited about these embossing folders. I have even more ideas flowing through my mind right now, but we're gonna have to save it for the next video. If you enjoyed this, please give it a big thumbs up and leave me a comment down below letting me know which card or technique was your favorite. I would love to hear from you down there or share your favorite embossing folder technique that I didn't share. I'd love to hear any more. Again, I'll have links down below to everything I used in today's video, and these embossing folders are available now, and using those links helps support me, so I really do appreciate it. Also, before I go, I wanted to share that I'm teaching a class with Altenew featuring their stamp wheel. I love their stamp wheel platform, and I'm gonna share tons of new ways to use it. And in this class, Altenew's designed a ton of exclusive new products that are only available in class. I'll have a link down below where you guys can check it out. There's a regular bundle and a deluxe bundle, and there's some special deals going on right now as you're watching this video. So definitely be sure to check it out. That class is gonna be tons of fun. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today, and I'll see you very soon in another card making and crafting video. Have a great day. Bye.